Blitz is defined as a sudden savage attack. It is indeed all this. The effect is sure. The premise is simple. It's a basic primal confrontation, man to man. No excuses are offered. None except. Welcome to the latest edition of Longhorn Blitz with Horns247.com. Looks like a radio station. Now, here are your hosts, lifetime Longhorn Rod Babers. Pure athlete, yeah. I transcend race, hombre. Matt Butler. I don't talk <laughs> shit, man. I back it up. And we are talk full of that, man. That's right. And Jeff Howe. It's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> and that's the bottom line. Because Stone Cold said so. If you're going to blitz, come strong. But don't come at all. Yeah, it happened. Again, here we are. We're wow. not. We don't. We can't even get out of the month of September. Man, following this program, without Rod, as you say, the fit hitting the shan. Man, yeah, we all gotta do the grown up thing. You know, when you drink too much and you realize, like, man, I've drank too much tequila or too much Bud Light, whatever it is, and you got to be a grown man and go in there and face that toilet bowl and yeah. put your finger down your throat. And force yourself to vomit up all of that, you know, poison. All that poison. It's been a long yeah. time since I had one of those moments. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll plead the fifth on when the last time I had mine. But well, actually, I just recently had to do it because out of that burnt orange Kool Aid that I drank, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta force myself to vomit it all up because I got drunk on it. Oh, and uh, man. I, yeah, exactly. I had, a, I had, I had a moment of reality, and I was like. Why? I don't even know why I said I said nine wins. I'm gonna stick with it now because I'm I'm yeah. doubling down at this point. Like, what's the point? I mean, mm-hmm. what, your, pot, just, your pot committed on that. Yeah, nine. I mean, yeah. I didn't give so many reasons why it can happen. So now I'm just gonna have faith in Tom Herman. But I gotta say, it didn't look like a nine win team to me. And that's from Did a guy not. that bleeds burn orange and nicknamed yeah. Kool Aid. Yeah, I mean, and so it might be eight win team, mm-hmm. maybe a seven win team, but it don't look like a nine win team. I said eight, but even I'm wondering how they're gonna exactly. do that. It's a 34 29 loss. Maryland. This is Longhorn Blitz with Horns 24-7. I am Jeff Howell. Let me bring in the rest of the team. He is the master of the soundboard, the drop machine extraordinaire, Matt Butler. Matt, uh, other than other than the play, Mrs. Lincoln, how was it? Oh. <laughs> other, than, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? Or whatever the analogy is. Oh, there were plenty of them. Rod was actually breaking down the Of Mice and Men earlier, but maybe we'll yeah. learn more about it. Oh, yeah. I love yeah, that. Tom Herman used the... Uh, That's how you know you get... You, compared you, you, his team to... I, I guess compared them to Lenny and Of Mice and Men. Yes. And... I'm yeah. not one to have read much. Was it a much. bunny or a puppy? It was a bunny. Did he, I never he read killed it. the bunny. It, it gets it's a while. It's been a it while. gets darker <laughs> than animals if you read the book. Yeah, but. no, I'm scared. it's a long time ago. <laughs> it's, it's been a murders? minute. Since it's been a minute. I'm gonna like, go back and read it again. You know what? Tom Herman inspired me. I'm gonna go back and read of mice and men. Probably, Probably, I'm gonna uh, go back and read that'd that. That'd be a classic. good like radio show. You and Gary yes. Johnson read it together. Like no. see if you would come on yeah. and you could have a reading club. Did you hear Andrew Luck does this book club? And he was like Andrew looking Luck so has a book club? Hank, yes, he does. And he talks on awesome. Instagram and he's like, Oh yeah, July, I can't wait for Hank the cow dog. And Man. it's like him and all the fans of the Colts, they review books together. They have a book club once a month. Man, I don't know about Andrew awesome. Luck's book club, but uh at Captain Andrew Luck on Twitter might be the best damn thing on Twitter. Oh, so he's a civil warrior. Yeah. Uh, Captain, yes, no doubt. Pretty good. Yeah, yes, like his latest tweet. Yes. Uh, Dearest mother, the unit has returned home, Overrated. but we have no time to relax. <laughs> the Tiger men are looking for another battle, and this time the stakes are real. Scouts report their unit marches our way, guided in the night by the glow of Captain Dalton's fiery crown. Oh. Anxious, <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> I, love it. I like just, the alliteration at the end. I just, Anxious, uh, Andrew. I just great. love it, man. No, it's fantastic. And he's coming back from being shot in the arm. Yeah, oh, yeah he's, he keeps talking about his uh, his yeah. sidearm is firing at a much greater <laughs> rate than before. But still that not b- battle-tested. <laughs> uh, it's great. Uh, a man who's yeah, been battle- laugh about that. Oh, there, there we go. go. Get I'm away from the Longhorns. The yeah, a, a man who's been battle-tested, uh, as one scout called him at one point in time, the best damn gunner. In the NFC North. Damn straight. That is a correct statement, is it not, I believe, Rod? I believe that to be, yeah, the truth. That's awesome. Yeah. There you go. At least, hey, Rod, That's you were the, the best the at doing best something in the, in the National Football League. Hey, man, you wouldn't That's go best make, in the world. You wouldn't go make a roster if you weren't the best at something. There you go. Yeah. And uh, our, our lockdown corner here on the show cashed a lot of checks. Lifetime Longhorn, 2002 UT All-American. 2002 semifinals for the Jim Thorpe Award. Fourth-round draft choice of the New York Giants in 2003. Spent his NFL career with the Giants, Lions, Bears, Bucks, Broncos. And a year with the Hamilton Tiger Cats of the Seattle. When he was oh. done with football, got himself back to Austin, Texas, in the 40 acres where he earned his degree. His tearing is on the way, and when he gets it, he will wear it proudly. But in the meantime, he is a card-carrying member of DBU, number 21 in your program, number one in your hearts, Mr. Rod Babers. And, Rod, um, 
I'm actually glad we're recording this podcast today and not like Saturday evening or yeah. anytime during the day on that Sunday time to digest when it. I was just full of P and V and just yeah. I mean, because look, here's the deal. Um covering this team, I covered the last four years of Mac, all three years of Charlie, two years of Tom Herman. I'm tired of writing about the you know what show at the cluster you know what factory. Yeah. Like, it's just old, man. It's not fun. Like, even maybe that first year under Mac, it was maybe, like, getting into diagnosing why things went wrong and what happened. And then under Charlie, it was just some of those losses, man, were just sad. But this one's just disheartening because let's start with this. Maryland's not a good football team. No. Mm -mm. They might win six or seven games. Yeah, they're hoping to be bowl eligible. Yeah. Hoping to. That's yeah. that what their goal is. Yeah. They're no better than fifth in their own division in the Big Ten. Pretty much. They're not better than Michigan. They're not better than Ohio State. They're not no. better than Penn State. They're not better than Michigan State. So, Texas lost to a team that, at best, is a middle-of-the-road team in the Big Ten. That's thing number one. Thing number two, and, and this is where we'll start, and this was my big takeaway from the game. We'll talk about the end because you have to with this game. You can't brush that aside by any means because that is a becoming a systemic problem mm -hmm. with this program is being able to finish off close games. Yeah. But, Rod, we sat here on this show last week. We talked about it for the last few weeks. Everything going on around this Maryland program was going to have those kids probably ready to when that moment came where they could just focus on playing a football game and nothing else. Maryland was probably going to come out on fire probably get ready to give Texas everything they got. They're going to come out smoking with both barrels. Texas better be ready because if not, they could be in a dogfight for four quarters. And guess what? Even though they lost to Maryland last year, even though Maryland did the same thing to them last year. Yeah. Yeah. And even though the, all the signs were there why you should be ready for this game. And I even, you know, driving in to, to do the show this morning, Casey Stuttered spent some time with Bucky and Aaron. I heard Casey calling it a trap game. And this isn't me disrespecting Casey's opinion because we've had Casey on the show many times. I respect Casey's opinion. How the hell can you say in a season opener be a trap game? And a guy in the team that beat you last year and says a trap game. And Casey, in his defense, did say afterwards, yeah, it's game played of emotion and I wanted to get in a fight. So that tells you where Casey was coming yeah. from. Yeah. But, Rod. Not a trap game, in my opinion. They weren't ready to play, yeah. and there was no emotion. There was a, there was a, you can't even call it a scuffle. But right, right at the end of pregame, when both you punt and then you meet at midfield and you huddle up, man, those Maryland kids were hype. They're yeah. jumping up and down, and they're trying to start some stuff with Texas. And again, hindsight is twenty twenty. Maybe this should have dialed me in that things were going to be different. <laughs> Texas kids just kind of stood there. Yeah, they didn't engage. For the past decade, it sort of seemed as if the Texas kids at times don't get that when the other teams face in Texas, they're, it's like almost a Super Bowl. Like, everybody wants to beat Texas only because it has that name brand. They may feel, hey, we are just as good or we think better than you. We don't get the respect y'all get just because you have that name plate on the front of your name. And Texas gets other teams showing up, especially when you're at home where add all the factors you're talking about when you have, you know, whatever, Maryland, all the stuff over the summer. You can easily see that these teams come out and for like the past decade just haven't seemed to have that next level competitiveness at times. It just randomly won't be there. And what's worse, Matt, that team beat you last year. Yep. They don't fear you. They're no. not. They weren't. Maryland was not scared of Texas. And that's one thing you even heard Herman saying that last week about it. When it was, it, that's why it's frustrating even more so for Texas fans to know that and then see them that performance in the first quarter because the first quarter you look at the plays and I mean it is a couple brain farts here and there and everything else is just seem to be lack of execution. It's like you can be as good as you have been all summer, but still doesn't matter if you don't perform well and don't execute. That's just going to be what happens. Rod, where yeah. do you want to start? Because I, I, you can go a number of different directions. I was, First I mean, it, it's unacceptable doesn't even begin to me to describe how you can go into the game and, and not be ready to go right from the jump. Defensively, they weren't or ready. They weren't ready, they weren't ready to defend the jet sweep. The offense was discombobulated until the middle of the second quarter, which we'll get to that in a minute, but... I just don't understand, Rod, how in a season opener with everything we talked about, with a team that beat you last year, and you've talked all offseason about how things are going to be different and we're close and yada, yada, yada. Man, at the end, it's, 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 the, one it's the one thing this program has done consistently this decade. It's talk. Yeah. It's talk. Didn't um, perform. I think the, uh, you know, 
these are issues, uh, and this Longhorn fans are, are losing it, and rightfully so. Mm. It is a loss to Maryland. Uh, but I think it's all pent up over the last eight years. Um, no doubt. Because the issues yeah. have persisted over three different regimes now. Uh, the end of Mac Brown's and tenure, it looks the same. all throughout Charlie Strong's tenure, and now even the second year of Tom Herman. And it's the same issues. And you know, we've been asking the question, you know, is Texas back every year? We start asking that question, making our big pro- projections and predictions. Uh, the truth is we might start asking the question, is Texas football broken? Mm-hmm. Because there are several smart, really good football coaches who tried to fix it, and they can't really do it. That's... They can't figure it out. And, yeah. and I, I don't actually know what it is. I, 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 obviously, it's not just one thing. But they it materializes on the field, and to us, just observing, it looks like the same issues persisting over and over again. And, yeah, I think I, think, I knew Todd Orlando would have issues. I mean, I said that he was going to have to scrap that game plan. Whatever he, he came out with, he was going to have to scrap. He just had no idea how Matt Canada was going to attack him. I expected that, actually. Um, what I did expect him to do was to adjust. He did adjust, just not as well. Um, and there were some guys I expected to play well on defense that didn't play well. I think what was most disheartening was that, you know, the team initially just watching them, and you talked about how you saw them in the pregame. You know, they started out the game with a penalty. You know, Colin Johnson literally was not ready to play. I mean, he, he literally uniform. had a uniform violation. He was not ready to play. Had to be removed from the field. And then, then they the put next in Brandon Eagles. And in Brandon Eagles, there's a miscommunication between he and Sam about the play, which was obviously probably scripted. And they were going to go to Colin Johnson initially when there was off coverage, man to man there. And so they kind of started out, you know, always in a funk. And then at the penalty, and they, so and and that really was kind of a microcosm of the entire first exactly. quarter. I know that I like that they threw it deep to Devin Duvernay. Something I said they should have been doing from the jump. They did try to pass to open up the run. But the fact that the offense doesn't have anything they can lean on as their bread and butter, even you know Matt Canada, we don't, I don't know what Matt Canada's known for in all of the tent poles of his ideology. Jet sweep. But he ran that jet sweep to perfection versus Texas, and he ran it over and over again, and he built things off of it, play action, different stuff off of it. He just found a weakness, yeah. and he kept using it. In Texas, when Texas had something like that, or when they had the up tempo, when they went to the second quarter and they scored. On a six-play, 69-yard drive, Keontae Ingram, big part of that. Trey Watson was a big part of that. Lil Jordan Humphrey, I think, had like a 24-something-yard reception during that drive. That's when Texas looked their best, and yet you didn't see that ever again the entire game. Like, you didn't, they didn't run the up-tempo ever again. It's like, well, it, it worked really well. Why not break it out? Why not run it again? And I think that's because they don't have an identity. They don't know what they want to do from down to down. The Keontae Ingram decision that coach said, I didn't want to play him in the second half because I wanted experience. You know, to me, I mean, I could be wrong about this, and I like Tom Herman. I think that's just him grasping at things. I mean, that didn't make mm-hmm. any, that doesn't make any sense. But all because kids, if you're worried about if you're, if you're going to prioritize experience because you think a younger guy is going to hurt you, then why not apply it to the quarterback position? And he said you know specifically I mean? like he never, ball security, he, and I still don't understand why one he, guy that you he feel never is. He never talks about that. We've talked about now. It's a, it's a trend with Sam Ellinger. Late in games, game on the line, USC, Oklahoma State, um, Texas Tech, mm-hmm. now Maryland. He turns the, the ball over. Well, a lot of that's inexperience and immaturity, and some people would say Shane may not do that, and yet so he won't apply that logic that he applied to the running back position to the quarterback position so it's it's just weird to me. The guy was averaging over six yards a carry. He obviously had figured something out. Like I mean, he obviously was a, um, I would say kind of a matchup advantage. But his running style and mm-hmm. his vision, all right, were working with certain plays. And even Sam Ellinger, the reason Sam Ellinger won the damn job was because he has dual threat ability, right? He had seven rushes for thirty yards. Twenty four of those yards came on two design run plays. They were like these uh, slow play counter option, quarterback option, whatever mm-hmm. the hell they were in the fourth quarter. And he got double-digit gains on both of those. And I was like, well, we never saw that earlier. Why not break that out earlier so that you can build on that concept? Now you can have play action and pop passes mm-hmm. and things like that. Like, it's like one thing works, then use that one thing, and then when they adjust to that, you have a counter adjustment. I don't see any of that. So Tom Herman, I don't know who he's who he thinks he's fooling, but he needs to call the damn plays. It's over. You were wrong. Except the fact that you were wrong about Tim Beck, and everybody else was right. And that's hard for coaches to accept 
He was like, nah, my guy will get it. My guy will figure it out. Hmm. So, and Charlie Strong, I think we all agree, he did it to a fault. And he, so the, this was the his, exact point he made the decision. Yeah. Game one, the next season. And it's but like, like, dude, it's obvious. It doesn't work. And if you ended up calling the plays or influencing the plays more – during the second quarter, it was obvious. It it it's, it it it, st- it jumped off the television screen. It jumped off the film. Can I yep. give you the breakdown, so, Rod, of that? Come on, Tom. If, if you, you got to do it, man. If you take out the uh, Ellinger to Duvernay touchdown, which was after a sudden change or after a sudden change on a punt return, a great punt return by Brandon Jones, and that was a one play, yeah. thirty nine yard drive with the touchdown. Uh, take that out. Texas had seven started the game seventeen plays, twenty one total yards. Yeah. And then you look at the second start of the second quarter, in the middle of the second quarter, when you went tempo from that drive through the end of the from half, drive, yeah. 17 plays, 155 total yards. Oh, man. It, was, it ain't rocket science. It's pretty obvious. It's that football. Tom, Tom Harmon decided. Well, it is like football, I said, Rod. Tim Beck is a great, he, he, he might be a great coordinator, from all I know. Obviously, he's, work, he's a coordinator at the University of Texas, so he, he's pretty damn good at what he does. Mm-hmm. But he's not a great play caller, yeah, man. I'm telling analyst. you, when he's got to start calling plays, when certain things don't work, he can't really visualize looking for it. He likes chess. He can't be two, three steps ahead. He ain't a freestyler. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah he's got to like be able a to do studio that. Like, like I always said, you know, and I made that analogy before. I mean, that's that's the truth of it. And, and, that, and people say, oh, man, that's ridiculous. No, it's not ridiculous. That's the truth. He's just not one of those guys that can that can actually, when the game plan doesn't work as, you know, as predicted, he cannot scrap it and go, okay, I know this offense so well. I know what it needs to be. I know the personnel so well. I know who needs to be put in what position against what uh, player and what matchup, and I can make this offense work. I can make it tick. He doesn't, he doesn't know it that well, man. He's not that guy. Yeah. Like, he's just not. Yeah. And I, and I, and well, and I think sh- he can help you come up with the game plans, but Tom Herman, you have to call the plays. It's your offense. Yeah. It ain't Tim Beck's offense. It's the pro spread. It's your pro spread. So you got to call it, man. I mean, that's just and, – and you don't have to always do it, but right now I think that's what Texas needs. He can rely on Tim Beck if he wants to, but – It's your I, only, it's your only short-term option to fix the offense. Yeah, opinion. like I think at this point, man, it's his only option. Now, he can, And I don't even know if fix is the right term, Rod, but it can it can be the short-term Band-Aid for the offense. Um, I, I, think, I think ultimately he is going to – he's going to be way too loyal like Charlie was because – he has already announced that it's you know basically still a group thing that they're going to do, and that basically proves that he's too yeah. low because at this point Charlie had loyal. made that decision after yeah. a game of mistakes before yeah. it was like okay well we got to maybe do something here going forward for the rest of the season. Right now, like you said and pointed out with Tom, it sort of is his baby. It's just he's still not being a head coach that's allocating, admitting a lot of faults. That's a lot of stuff to take onto his plate right now, and when the title momentum of the fans, that's what we've always seen sort of swallow up a coach. And it seemed like he had the biggest head start of compared to where Charlie was. But that wave is almost catching up to where if it continues to look bad, you don't want to be on the back end where it's out of necessity you make the change. You almost want him to be the coach as we think he is the forward-thinking football mind to identify this is an issue. We need to fix it before it becomes something that may not be able to overcome. I. Yeah. I can respect Tom Herman not wanting to throw his guys under the bus and having the back of his assistant coaches because as a head coach, that's what you should do. But, man, all great head coaches make mistakes. All great head coaches, if you've hired a wrong coordinator or you've hired a, a, a bad position coach or a bad strength coach or a, a, a bad football ops guy. Yeah. And, and there's a couple things I want to attack here. Number one, when you talk about Tom Herman's loyalty and the staff structure, it was clear that he valued – Staff continuity over changing things up. Yeah, he felt that was what this program needed. Yeah, and you can make an argument for that. Could have made an argument for that in the offseason. Yeah, Texas had a lot of turnover right. in the last and, eight years. And my my take on it was, it, that's not a that's not a wrong answer. If you want to do that, that's fine. But your product, specifically on offense, better be much better than what we saw last year. You better have some tangible signs that. You spent some time in the offseason figuring out, number one, how to manage personnel, and number two, concepts and things you can hang your hat on. And I asked Tim Beck that in the press conference last week, his availability. I said, well, what do you want this offense? When you get into the the thick of the season and people say, man, this is the identity of the offense. And all Tim Beck said, we want to be an offense that can run the ball whenever we want. That's what they want to hang their hat on. Well, that's a nice big picture thing, but you got to have concepts, Rod, and things that you can go to like, hey, look, when all else fails, we know regardless of whatever coverage we see, these this route these route concepts will work. We Our guys are confident yeah. enough that it can work. Whatever front we see, whatever blitzes we see, whatever alignment they want to shift in, we know this 
inside zone. We can we can get it, and we'll get we'll block it well enough to get four or five yards. No question. You didn't see that, and that's my big issue with the offense. Is you alluded to it earlier, Rod? It's almost like you're just running plays. Like you think back to the the two best, and it's tough to. I, I'm not going to disparage Major Applewhite or praise him or whatever. It's just tough to because 2013 there were times where he was just kind of cobbling together stuff because of injuries, yeah. to David Ash and Jay Johnson mm-hmm. or whatever. But the two best, the two best play callers that Texas has had in this decade. To me, that had that had the combination of good play calling and an offensive identity were Sterling Gilbert and Brian Harson, and they went about it different ways. Brian Harson's was, man, he's going to run that outside zone ten times, but you know, man, he's running that to set something up. I don't know what he's going to set up, yeah. but there's going to be some kind of funk or trick play or deep shot. He's doing. There's a there's a there's a method to the madness. You see the layers of the complexity right. building. Yeah. And Sterling Gilbert, it was all about the identity of the Viren shoot. It's mm-hmm. like, why don't you throw it over the field? Well, we're not gonna throw it over the field because honestly, I'd rather have my middle of the field matchup be Deontay Foreman one on one with a linebacker or a safety. Yeah. That's my that's my one on one matchup in the in the middle of the field. Yeah. And there were you could see why things were done. It this to me, Rod, it, number one. It looks a lot like the Sean Watson offense where you're just kind of out there running plays and there's really no flow to it, no rhyme or reason. You're just kind of running stuff just to run it. And two, and I think this is the big issue with with the offense right now, when you look at Tom Herman's track record, he's either had one of two things. He's either had a dynamic quarterback at the places he's been. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about like from his first offense when he was at Texas State with Barrick Neely to Ohio State with Braxton Miller or Houston with Greg Ward, a dynamic game-changing quarterback. Or if you look when he was at Rice with Chase Clement or JT Barrett or Cardell Jones at Ohio State, he had dynamic, explosive playmakers around the quarterback. James Casey, Jarrett Dillard, Zeke Elliott, Michael Thomas, Philly Brown, just start going down the list of the dynamic guys he's had. To me right now, Whatever, if you do have dynamic guys on offense at Texas, your scheme isn't diverse enough, creative enough to take advantage of those, and you don't have a dynamic quarterback. So when you take all that into consideration, what does this offense look like? To me, it looks like a Greg Davis offense pre-zone read, where you're just out there with base 11 personnel and saying, hey, my guy's better than your guy, and we're going to go win these matchups. It's all about matchups. And when you've got Roy Williams and Cedric Benson and Bo Scaife, like legitimate NFL talent, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of Saturdays where yours are going to be better than theirs. But when that talent evens out and uh-huh. you need scheme or that little extra something to get you over the hump, it's not there. And, and that's and, where the rest of the field's caught up to Texas right. the most. And, and Texas doesn't have the first, like I said, so now you're in that situation where you need that little extra something to get you over the hump, and they just either they either don't have it or – they have it, like they found with Tempo, and just refuse to use it. Yeah, I, I, I think they have it. I, I, I really, <laughs> I just don't understand why they don't try to use the things that work. They had a, and they had like an hour and a half. I delay. thought that was the biggest they had an hour part and a half delay help. to try to figure out exactly what they did well and how to attack those last four drives they had when all they needed was one touchdown to win the game and the defense. And you could you could say the defense actually did adjust. The defense actually may have used the time wisely because the defense kept giving them chances and giving them uh-huh. the ball back. And they still didn't figure out the tempo worked really well with them. Hey, you know what? Keontae Ingram's our best right. He's our best running back right now. We got to go with the hot hand. We got to go with that guy that's mm-hmm. actually got the vision right now. He's working whatever it is our our run concept. They didn't figure that out. Sam Ellinger running the football. What? Why the hell? We we talked about why he won the quarterback competition. He and he's more comfortable running the football. He actually would like to run the football more. And I know they may have told him, "Hey, you're a little dangerous. You're high risk, high reward when you're running the football." But that's his comfort zone, and I think that's what makes him dynamic. When he's running the football, and he's a running threat. Then the opposing teams they got they got to devote a spy to him. And when they devote a spy to him, that's going to open up passing lanes. People say, "Oh man, he seems like he's a better passer when he's running." No. He's more dangerous to the defense. More people have to pay attention to his running ability. That opens up mm-hmm. passing lanes. Use so that. You, yeah, all these concepts need to <laughs> be built. In. As, it's a chess you know, game. It's not yeah, They need to be built on top of one another. These are what offensive concepts are. That's how you develop an identity. Yes, and then you force feed the football to little Jordan Humphrey and Colin Deception. Johnson. When you get a one-on-one every time. I like that. They, they get a check every time. They put little Colin, uh, Colin Johnson in the slot. That's how he got that deep ball that set up the uh, Kyle Porter touchdown. 
the De- Devin Duvernay touchdown, that was from in the slot. I think that's creative. Just move those guys mm-hmm. around. Get them mashed up on a, an inside, you know, a safety or, or a defensive back, a nickel or a dime guy. But the, the, why they don't continue to do that, continue to build on those concepts that work, I have no idea. They almost just abandoned them. They're like, oh, that worked for that drive. Now we got to start over from scratch. <laughs> All right. Now let's free A new that's, one. I'm just like, well, no, 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 no. Go back to what was working. Go back to the tempo. Use the tempo. And then use the tempo with a little quarterback run game. And then use that with – and little Jordan Humphrey, I thought he was a Swiss Army knife. He just lined up at the wide receiver. I saw him lined up at every position and sliding outside. But – what about him at Wildcat? Why didn't he line up at H-back? Why didn't I see him in the backfield? I thought he was a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you use him there. He can just be a diversion. He can distract. They're Free like, oh, hell, motion. what the hell's going on? Exactly. They Not move him around, around. And then other guys start freaking out. And then, oh, somebody else is open because you they were distracted by Lil' Jordan Humphrey in the backfield. They thought something funky was going to happen. I mean, what? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. They had all offseason, man, to at least try to figure out something that they did well. And the offensive line, by the way? Was not the reason you lost that game. Not the at offensive all. line, I, I think, was improved. Uh, and you, you still three. could not develop an offensive identity behind an improved offensive line. So I, I'm, that's my frustration. That's why Tom Herman can no longer afford to play this game where it's a democracy. The play call is a democracy. Everybody gets to get in on the play calling. You call the plays. You call the plays. No, no, no. It ain't democracy. It's a dictatorship. It is your offense. You call the plays. To your point, Rod, about the offensive line. Uh, this is even factoring in two two carries for minus six yards by Deshaun Jameson. Uh, as a team, you averaged three point nine a carry, almost four yard, basically four yards a carry. I know, I know. People say, "Oh, that's still bad." It's like, nah, it's improved compared that's to what we saw team. last year. But that's what we're talking about with the offensive line. Like, that's okay. You're you're showing me there's improvement there. Yeah. And, and when you go to the middle of the second quarter on, and that's sort of why when we talked about the how they came out and it just was that first quarter. That's really where yeah. the frustration frustration was because I agree with you from there forward Rod looked like the better team and performed well it was just the fact that you were so putrid and I don't know how much now I agree that the players weren't used well and then not executed well and then it seemed to have some mental mistakes so when you bury yourself in a hole like that it's just you deserve to lose and that's what happened to Texas weren't able to overcome because in the back end you're now feeling the ramifications of your actions you're trailing in a pressure situation on the road even though your defense is coming through getting you the ball it almost came down to us talking like the way Ellinger a guy that admits that like he's forcing the ball in because he wants to win and it's something that he's a guy that's going to take those chances but if you don't have say the skill set or the experience or you just aren't on perfect you're going to make those mistakes and Maryland they they were there to at least just take it from Texas whenever given the opportunity Texas beat themselves I mean that's pretty after 10 penalties what discouraged me uh was most discouraging I should say about the penalties it was like the seniors it was like veterans I mean I was it was Charles Amenahu and Gary Johnson. Can we talk about two of those real quick, Rod? And I want to get yeah. your, your take ahead. on it from a player perspective. I know people say, well, Gary Johnson, there shouldn't have been a targeting penalty. Maybe it's a penalty. Maybe you know you don't yeah. throw him out of the game for that. That stuff happens. But, football. Rod, you got to be smarter than that if you're That'd Gary smart, Johnson, yeah. right? You know your linebacker depth is light. You See, know but in that you, play, I don't know you, how much he could have done. You're missing your middle linebacker right now. I think you that's just I mean? a casualty of the modern rules, though, because I if you look at Gary, whenever he went to make the tackle – he was still standing up, and then when you had that quick sliding of a quarterback, yeah. you changed that launching point. He it's, launched for his mid body, and it's just football stuff like that's gonna happen. It's just with the rules. Yeah, no. I mean, Even if you you can do everything right, not saying I don't know if he did that time, but we're gonna have situations all year long where some players get ejected I, and I, they honestly, can't control why, anything. Well, I, I, I disagree with that. Well, no, no, I'm not. That. Sa- no, guys, on that guys play, guys in the NFL right now are already talking about how they have to change the way no, they no, tackle. No, no, of course, of change course, their, of course. Change their, I'm not saying their that. Craft. I'm not so, saying that. No, no, no. That rule has existed for a while. Yeah, yeah. So you are a player. You have to adjust. That is your responsibility. You adjust. Yeah. You getting yeah. kicked out of the game. You going to jail is your fault. I'm Very true. Why you? It's still your fault. Somewhere along the line, you when you sit in jail, it might as well have been in jail. But sometimes there, you can go, to go You know what? This is my fault. Even though that guy spit on me, and then I went after him and beat the hell out of him, <laughs> it's still my fault. I probably could have conducted myself a little bit better. It ain't my fault. He spit on me. I should have been able to beat the hell out of him. But I'm in jail now. Yeah. I'm in jail. So yep. what, what part did I have in that? Yep. So, Gary Johnson, what part did you have in it? Yes, it's unfair. Life, not, life's not fair. Right. Big, 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 you know, big reveal. <laughs> it ain't fair. <laughs> so what, did, what part did you have in it? And do you need to every now and then go, you know what, I'm going to let up. I'm going to get the tackle. I'm going to get it. But I'm, I'm let, I can't go out like a heat-seeking missile every yeah. time. And that's what the NFL is trying to get rid of. Yeah. That's what college football is trying to get rid of. I know. Rid of. So, and it looked like he maybe yeah. had all those intentions in his mind, and it still happened is all I'm so saying. So there, there's, there's three areas of penalties I want to talk about. The, the Gary Johnson targeting was one. 
the Charles Amenahu roughing the passer. Like the B.J. Yeah. Foster one, that's one where a guy's jumping as the ball is released. He comes down. He makes contact with the quarterback's head. That's one of those that it's like, yeah. man, that's the one. That's one to me that's like, what, what are you going to do? Like, that's, He's being aggressive. Yeah. But the Charles Amenahu one, he Just took, like the Gary Johnson he, Charles Amenahu took two full steps before he laid into Kasim Hill. Like, yeah. you got to be smarter yeah, than that. Yeah, that one was dumb. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree with that. You and be then the pass interference is, Rod, I, I don't know – I don't know if it's lack of confidence or what, but I didn't see a whole lot of confidence in either one of the two starting senior corners. Uh, Chris Boyd drops an interception. Chris Boyd that He's pig. not turning his head around I can't on talk deep about balls. People in that. Yeah, um, well, yeah, Devontae Davis, uh, and they picked obviously. In Devontae sorry, Davis, I didn't so. mean to pull the scab back. No, on I said, I'm not going to pick on him for dropping a pick because I've dropped plenty of them. Mm-hmm. Trust me. Um, but I will say that yeah, I was a little disappointed in. Uh, really, it, it, P.J. Locke was a little disappointing in the back end. Yeah. Brandon Jones and Caden Stearns, I think, played well. I like the way I, – I think those two safeties are fantastic. And, and Jones, Jones in the return game? Is a play, yeah, playmaker, even a returner. But, yeah, I would say the nickels in the two corners. And even when Kobe Boyce came in, they picked on Boyce. Uh, I expect to see Anthony Cook maybe a little bit more now that we have injuries to – Devontae Davis and Chris Boyd's got like an Neither ankle. one of those guys might play again. Why not play against Tulsa? That's what I'm saying. They That's why I expect to see a lot yeah. more Anthony Cook out there. Because I think Anthony Cook's a, a naturally a better cover man than Kobe Boyce. Which I think in the Big 12, ultimately, experience is experience now. Experience matters so much. I love though. Now all of these things that didn't matter before now matter. Now experience. Experience. Mm. Experience. Chris Warren was really experienced, and mm-hmm. then he didn't get to play a lot. I mean, I, now experience is the big thing. I'm like, whoa, when did that happen? Like, no, no, we got to get experience out there in the I mean, clutch. Playing like, fear based. What about the guy that I thought? Mer- I thought of meritocracy. I thought it was all about people who won the job. Remember that? You got to practice well. You win the job. You got the job. It's yours. You get the you get to play week to week. You earn it. And it's like now, now, now all of a sudden, experience, experience. And it's like, what the hell, man? This, this, uh, the excuses, the way they try to spin it is. That's what really is, is 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 infuriating to me as a as a former player as a lifetime Longhorn. I mean now now they were trying too hard. They want to be perfect. It's like what the hell? Like, that's a thing. You mean you know what I mean? Like you can give that excuse? I can give that excuse? Like I I I, I, want, I wanted it too bad. I tried too hard. I can understand you know paralysis I mean? like, by analysis. I mean this isn't like I mean I don't I don't get. <laughs> and now yeah the the the, the Lenny quote from a mice, a mice and men the, the quote that he had about Lenny and. That he explained to Gary Johnson that you know Texas football was just it trying was like to Tommy hard. Boy in his the pretty little pit killing the rabbit. Thank you, Matt. Like, Thank you, Matt. My pet. I'm like, wait, then, you're trying way too hard to exactly spin that, and to explain a way that we got out coached. Yeah, we got out played, and they, Maryland was tougher than you. And Maryland, even though they go, even though they had an interim coach who don't even know all the defensive mm. players' names. All right. I cut myself. And oh. they're dealing with one of the biggest like tragedies. They they went like a month without even summer and winter condition like summer conditioning. Like they they went like a month without it because Jordan McNair died and they, it was a big controversy. They're like nah, yeah, we gotta we gotta tone it down and all this. And yet you went up there and you got you really got whipped. I mean, Le- it, you made it closer, but to to start off the game, you got out coached. You weren't ready to play. How the hell are you not ready to play That's to start off I'm a saying. game against a, a team that beat you last year at home? Like you saying mm-hmm. that about Matt Canada when he admitted wow. like he didn't know some of the defensive players' names. Like everybody's been to one of those high school practices where like the varsity head coach wanders down to the freshman field. like, Jim, coach, I'm Bill. Son, it doesn't matter. Get in there. <laughs> get, <that. laughs> get in there. Five, five. Yeah, Cut myself. Oh, okay. Just yeah. call, just call the kids by numbers. Yeah. And this is a guy that's. This is not. This is not like the next Urban Meyer or anything. People. Okay. Mm-hmm. This guy is with his uh, what his seventh program in nine years. I mean, this guy moves around. He's a good offensive mind, but it's not like he's standing up. Anybody's going. You know what? Make that guy head coach. He's going to be fantastic. No, he just kind of falls into a nice little position, and mm-hmm. he's a good offensive mind. And man, he had a game plan. If he doesn't have that stupid uh, speed sweep, which he got yeah. addicted to in his own end zone, mm. hell, man, Texas gets the safety. You know, man, that thing could end up being kind of wrong. If he's a little bit conservative there and just kind of takes it in, they may hold the well, momentum. The decision to go for it on fourth mm-hmm. and one. Yeah. Well, no, and that's you the two I mean? things. Like, he had some situation where he was like, "Ooh," but I understand. He was like, "I got to be a gambler." He's, that guy's a play caller. 
Yeah. That guy's a play caller because sometimes you'd be like, oh, that didn't make that ain't make a lot of sense. But you like he was setting you up. He was like, no, I got to keep banging him. I got to keep him worried about this speed sweep. I got to keep him worried about this or that. And it had Texas on their heels the entire time. And I thought he called a good game considering what he was going up against yeah. in Todd Orlando. And Rod, this what's okay. me. Let me get this in real quick okay. because you're talking about a second ago, you know, the experience that we're talking about choosing Watson in in that situation. And it really made me think about the psychology of these coaches and almost as if we're coaching from a fear-based psychology. And when you're Texas, you should never be the team with the fear-based psychology that you need to protect the ball. No, if you're Texas, you have the best players. Put your best player out there, make plays, and beat somebody. And then what happens on the other side? The other team is actually not – coaching from a fear-based psychology they are doing actually their bread and butter like doing my daily fantasy research i knew everybody knew that matt canada all he does is build everything off the jet suite and funk. so thing was yeah. what he was smart about i even did the research and i went through six guys that i thought he made sure to showcase the guy nobody had seen before because the freshman coming in if he has that skill set and you trust him to do it, it's a first perfect way to identify your talent yeah. and deploy it in a non-fear-based yeah. psychology where you're going no i I know my strengths. I'm going to use my pieces yeah. to beat your pieces. I don't care player. that don't you're care better th than all your yeah. guys are better than me. If we execute this precision play, we're going to beat your better players yeah. because I know what I want and know what I have, and I'm going to use it better. And when you say, I didn't even think about the fear-based aspect until Trey Watson came into the equation, yeah. but if Texas is already coaching from a fear-based mentality against Maryland in like, what is supposed to be your breakout game of your season? You sort of were given a free pass on the first season. That's something worrisome to think about what's in behind the coaches, what they may not even be admitting, but what you can read into by their actions of their decisions, and that's not good. Yeah. Let's get to a couple things, kind of not really rapid fire, but kind of quick here. Rob, we had a question come in. Anytime any of our listeners want to drop us a question on Twitter, uh, Matt is at Longhorn Blitz. This mm -hmm. should be easy to remember. Rod is at Rod Babers. Again, should be very easy to remember. Uh, I'm at Jeff How247. <laughs> or you can drop me, uh, you know, email us. Uh, actually, uh, in Vela, I'm not sure, uh, you know, that's the screen name, uh, the handle at horns247.com. Just drop me a message, uh, my inbox on the site. And uh, want to know on the topic we're talking about, uh, he just want to know from us uh, how uh, about preparing for an offense you have little to no film on and how to decide between reacting on defense versus attacking uh, against an offense like Matt Canada's. Uh, I'll say this, Rod, and I know you've hit on this too on the Rodcast, which, by the way, weekdays 1 to 3 on the, on the horn. You can catch Rod on the Rodcast, uh, and I'm on with Rod Mondays and Thursdays from 2 to 3. When you look at this offense, we talk about the jet sweep, but to me the bigger picture is – and we can say maybe it's funk, maybe it's these option-based offenses, mm -hmm. maybe it's something I think of more going back to the Oklahoma game last year where it's more, more some misdirection type stuff. Assignment football. Yeah. Yeah. I think because Todd Orlando's defense tends to be sometimes very aggressive, that's the way he wants to go about things, mm -hmm. Get him out of I think him. that's when you can use Texas speed and aggressiveness against them. Look, mm -hmm. every, done that forever every, offense, every offense that is impossible to stop, has a flaw. Mm -hmm. Every defense that is impenetrable has leaks. Yeah. There's a way to attack. It's just, do you have the right stuff within your system to do that? And can you identify in real time and do it during the game? Right. That's the big issue right we now. We saw it in Maryland last year, the dual threat mm -hmm. quarterback aspect. Walt Bell, they ran a pure like run-based spread offense. Yep. This State year with Matt it. Canada and, and the jet sweep last year with K-State. K-State did it. And go back we saw to the, Navy, too. At yeah, the Navy <laughs> against Todd Orlando. Yeah. And go back to the Oklahoma game last year. And I don't know why Lincoln Riley stopped running it. Texas didn't really know either. But <laughs> Oklahoma was gashing them with the, just a the basic counterplay. Yeah. And, Rod, what is the point of the counterplay? Get them to flow one mm -hmm. way run it back the other side. Yeah. 2013 and, Texas against uh, OU. Again, I just think that's one of those deals where you're just using somebody's speed and aggressiveness against them. It's just it's football, man. It's just mm -hmm. simple football. Yeah. There are certain things. I, I think when you're – not to say when you're vanilla, but when you're more of kind of a pro-style type offense, or even if you're just a basic spread offense – Man, if you if if it's easy to make you one dimensional, that's that's right down Todd Orlando's wheelhouse. Yeah. If he can find a way to make you one dimensional, then you're pretty much screwed. It's about the goal. Of you're gonna Maryland have to you're gonna have to you're gonna have to beat him left handed. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't make Maryland one dimensional. Couldn't do it. You couldn't make you couldn't make K State one dimensional. Makes a big last year. conference can be yeah. scary. And the reason he couldn't make Maryland one dimensional is honestly because of that speed sweep. Like they couldn't stop it. And Oklahoma kind of made themselves one dimensional. You can that do that when you got a Baker reason. Mayfield, right? Exactly. You can afford to do that. Mm -hmm. But I bet you they don't do that this year with Kyler Murray. Exactly. 
That Agreed. was the best. Yeah. Like literally, if you look in the past decade, Baker's two offenses at OU finished out. If you rank first and third, but uh, he had Cam, it was Johnny's offense second and Cam fourth. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. <laughs> so that's basically where I'm at on it, Rod. I mean, it's just there are just some offenses that are going to have some aspects in them that are going to give this Todd Orlando defense. And it's nothing and, against Todd Orlando; he's still a great coordinator. You no, know, he is, and, and this defense is going to have success this year. We're in the but golden era. Of it's offense. just, do you have the personnel and the ability to make those kinds of things work within your offense? Don't and don't discount the uh, you know the element of mystery. They just didn't have enough film. Period. That's on it. very just, true too. Yeah, and I, Matt Canada played on. That's why Matt Canada had those boom plays ready to go early. Those you know momentum shift plays. Those you know what I mean. He he had those ready to go, man. He really did. And even the freshman mm-hmm. that nobody knew about. It was all based on the element of mystery. Texas like who the hell is this? The dude's Who's that first, dude? Listen, the hell? for you know perspective, I mean? real He's quick. Got, the first three touches in that dude's career was a rush down. TD, receiving yeah. TD, and then yeah. he f- threw one. First one <laughs> since Dak Prescott did it. Do, uh, you know what you, I mean? Do you know when the last time that happened to Texas? And I can't. Believe I had to think about this game, getting the the you know information sheet from Maryland after the game. It's a game you were on the field for, Rod. The 2000 Holiday Bowl with Joey Harrington. That was the last time Texas faced somebody in a single game that had a rushing touchdown, a yeah. passing touchdown, and a receiving touchdown. Yeah. Both those two guys. Y'all mentioned quarterbacks. Joey this guy, a freshman wide receiver. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I, I so I think the element of mystery helped him out a lot. Texas just didn't have enough film. They just and then they used that element, man. They surprised Texas. It's that first quarter. That's that was that was them, you know, throwing everything they had at Texas and really kind of figuring out, okay, this is where Texas is weak. So they just kept going back to that same body blow, that speed sweep, and Texas, and, and you know, and, and they went to a four man line to, I think, a four man front, I should say, yeah. a lot more, uh, I think, to try to deal with it. They used and to it Quan, was, they brought to Quan Graham in the game and played Breck and Hager yeah. basically as the B backer. Yeah, and he he was a stand up, and I did work. I think that did do a lot. They actually made some plays on the speed sweep later on, but by then the damage had been done, mm-hmm. and the defense had to adjust, which means that's Todd Orlando. Todd Orlando doesn't want to do that. When you make Todd Orlando do that, essentially, you've already kind of won the chess match. Because he had to, do, he had to go back to the four man front, which we know he he prefers not to do. Right. And then once he does that, it's like, oh, well, there are other things that are open. Then you've left yourself vulnerable other places. And then Matt Cannon start they start to try to attack things yeah. downfield, play action, things of that nature. I, I don't worry about this defense long term. Like I said, Todd, Todd Orlando's proven he he's worth his salt as a defensive coordinator. And I think this defense, when you get into the Big Twelve, they proved against this uh, conference. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, nah, I wouldn't say that. I think, I, I wouldn't I, I'll say give that. him the benefit of the doubt. I think they've proven I, in this conference. No, I would say that. But man. it's just it, they got injuries right now that are mounting up with them. Well, but hear me out though, Rod. Hear me out though. I, I think looking at this conference. And thinking about how many teams realistically can have those kind of concepts in their run game that they hang their hat on, there aren't too many of them. Yeah, but you know the offensive minds in the Big 12, they can put them in. You know they got a speed True. sweep. Yeah. You know they got bear. You don't think Togerson's had one? You don't think Gundy's got them? You don't I can't think, believe we don't think Riley? You don't think Cliff Kingsbury's got them? I would say at least six of the seven of the teams in the Big 12 right now got that play call, and they have the ability to put in the motions and the shifts and the funk. Right. Unless you've identified the weakness. Mm-hmm. Once it's been now proven, the weakness in Todd Orlando's defense, you don't think the best offensive minds in the country no, I'm not in the Big saying, 12 that's not what can I'm be able to And now you got injuries. Now you got injuries too, so you got teams that can now start to capitalize on just bad matchups, like Kobe Boyce coming in the game, and Maryland was like, "Well, play caller, hell yeah, let's go at this guy." That's the reason he ain't starting. Let's go at him right now, and they went after him. Boom, boom, got him right. a touchdown. My so point on it is, I, I wouldn't be so fast to say the defense is not going to fall off. We've seen the second year defensive right. coordinators and them have their troubles. Don't be so quick to jump. I'm on willing them. to give them the benefit of the doubt. Is what I, I'm saying. Why? And, and, and again, why? Because I because I watched <laughs> really last, because Those I watched were, I watched last year I watched Todd Orlando make I, adjustments. Yeah, I watched I watched Vance Bedford his first year, and I watched Manny Diaz his first year. I was there for it. I'm just gonna and give them the benefit good. of the doubt. They we'll just, just have to good. agree. To, we'll just have to agree to disagree. They were just as good as Todd Orlando's defense. My point is, I'm not saying it's gonna be bad. I'm just saying you, it's overconfidence, and you're doing it on faith, basically, to say like, oh no, it's definitely gonna be. Just yeah, as I mean that's kind of all I have to go on, on right exactly. now. Because there's no, there's no reason to believe right now. There's no evidence to show that. Oh no, it's definitely going to pick up where I have faith in Todd Orlando that they because all make, the starts they, they that they were racking adjustments. up, they had more starts than that Manny Diaz second year defense or advanced Bedford second year defense. A lot of those starts are now hurt and left. You know what I mean? Like so, they're losing a lot of that experience. Now it's going back to them being inexperienced in a lot of areas. And I think teams are going to try to take advantage of what is now considered uh, a weakness in Todd Orlando's defense in his blueprint. Um, the other thing dealing with defense. And no Michael Dixon. 
which hurts. That and we saw that too. Boom. Yeah, we that's sat, also going to hurt that. We defense. sat here last week and talked about that's mm-hmm. one thing nobody yeah. was talking about how much of a difference that was going to make that you no now. longer had the ability to flip field position. Come on now. And Bushevsky, look, Bushevsky showed me enough that I think at some point he's going to be a solid. Yeah, he for wasn't you. bad. He was maybe but better than Dixon at the beginning. I think anybody mm-hmm. that was expecting him to come in and average, you know, fifty-five mm-hmm. yards a punt and be able to, you yeah. know, he did down one inside the five though that was pretty nice. And oh, he had a handful of good ones. One too when you have nine punts, true, very true, but number wise, we go, we miss Dixon. That helps. Consistency of Dixon yeah, you know what is I mean? what you miss. Um, and that was a big part of the defense last year. Rod, you just mentioned him earlier, and this is getting back to Anvela's question. Uh, is P.J. Locke the best option at nickel right now, or would you roll with somebody else? Yeah, they got to think about other options, I think. He's just a little stiff in that nickel position. I think, yeah, and talk about the Big 12 and being able to attack somewhere in that slot, I think they could attack P.J. Locke right now. We'll see. I mean, obviously make it a competition, but you might have to think about another – could this could this Brand, could this Brandon Jones injury allow you to move PJ Locke back to safety to see I mean, if that to see if that works with the injuries right now? Yeah, you're a little I mean you're a little handcuffed in how much you can do. Um, I don't could, know. We'll and, see. And, and, Todd Orlando can get creative. I mean, I, I know they like BJ Foster now, so I wonder how creative. Yeah, you know, they can start, start that, that was a bright spot, man. Him in yeah. that Joker role, you know. BJ Foster, yeah, yeah, he looked good. He yeah. looked. Good. I mean, I liked how physical he was. Um, he was around the ball, so I, I think I think you'll start seeing some of these young guys, man. Those freshmen, man. Yeah, Stearns, Stearns just looked like Stearns, he plugged in, I'll, and he was just safety. I'll throw even the <laughs> guys you saw like on the kickoff team, like Joseph Osai and Anthony Cook, yeah, uh, Keontae Ingram, Deshaun Jameson. Yeah, those guys didn't flinch, Rod. Oh Get no, I liked all the freshmen. It's time to play those and, guys. I mean, oh, it sounds corny, but at least it's you know a non-conference yeah. game that you lost. So in theory, just but, worry about the conference games. Yeah, but I think there are so many other guys that underachieved on that defense. PJ Locke being one, the Malcolm Roach being another one. I mean, he was he was a non-factor in that game, and I thought Malcolm Roach would actually um, be a guy that they were able to kind of weaponize, and they he was a non-factor in that game too. Right. So I think a lot of guys will they'll, buy, they'll bounce back games. Okay, before we get to predictions, let's do let's do this. Um, just a couple rapid fire questions. Let's go around the horn real quick. Is Tom Herman making the right move sticking with Sam Ellinger at quarterback? For now, yeah. For now, yes. Because you don't want to go back to Shane and then you have you're be stuck in the Sam Shane. You don't want to you know, create a battle spiral. when it's not there yet. Yeah. Can because I because right now I think you might he might be thinking about, you know what, we're gonna go all in with Sam. If Sam self destructs, then we without Same, it, shame then we the know then we know beyond a reasonable doubt that he is done. Like we're done with that. We're moving on to the youngsters, and I think he really likes those youngsters. Can I give you my theory? Can I give you yeah. my theory on this? Yeah. Let's say Texas, and I can't believe I'm going to say this. Let's say they start one and five, <laughs> which right now is is possible. Oh, yeah. man. it's not out of their own possibility. Dude. If you start one and five after a loss to Oklahoma, I don't think you go back to Shane Bouchard. I think if you're Tom Herman yeah. after that OU game, mm-hmm. I think you say screw it. This season's Great lost. Point. We're going with Cam Rising. Exactly. Sound like that's what Rob was saying too. Yeah, Maybe even it, before that. Well, yeah, and more than because Shane at this point, you know what Shane is. You just want yeah. to figure out what Sam is. You yeah. know what Shane is. I, and I, I, you want him I to be your backup. My opinion be is the reason why they're not making the switch. My opinion is this coaching staff does not believe they can win football games at a high level with Shane Bouchelle as a quarterback. Yeah, I agree. I think they figured that, that is they my believe opinion. that. Yeah. Whether that's true or not, right? That's what they believe. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, what is the one thing you guys want to see on offense against Tulsa? We haven't talked much about Tulsa because, oh. let's face it, Tulsa was 2-10 and 10 last year. They had to rally to beat Central Arkansas, who's a solid FCS team, but an FCS team nonetheless. Uh, what's the one thing you guys want to see on offense, though? To see confidence Ooh. and complexity, like we were saying, like actually see the offense evolve into something more than just making individual plays just randomly. Yeah, uh, I want the be- I, I want the key playmakers to play, like the best playmakers. And I think your top three playmakers on offense right now are Lil Jordan Humphrey, Colin Johnson, and Sam Ellinger. That includes Sam Ellinger's dual threat ability. I think that opens up the entire offense. Um, so would those- you throw Keontae Ingram in there? I would, yeah, I would. I'd put him in, in that right there in that top five. I'd like more. Can, can we talk? Him. I, I want to see the. Why the hell is nothing against Andrew Beck? But you're doing a disservice, to Andrew Beck, putting him in there on third and fifteens. That was what I was going to talk about real quick. He's personnel, like, like yeah, that's personnel what I want to see. Like, just understand your personnel. Like, there's no reason if you're going to go empty backfield in the fourth quarter when you're trying to drive the ball. Why Kyle Porter and Andrew Beck? And again, nothing against that? those guys. Nothing against those guys. It's the coaches putting them in spots where but they shouldn't be in. Even Cade Brewer because he's more of a vertical threat. Or Reese Lacy didn't play it also, but but Cade Brewer it will be a better option because I think he's a better route runner and he can get downfield than Andrew Beck. Yeah, like, and, bro, Danny Danny Young's proven he's a better receiver, more elusive than Kyle Porter. Like, if you want a guy that's got some experience, and the guy won, he, well, I say won the job, but he at least is higher on the depth chart. So, yeah. 
Yeah, the, yeah, I'm with you. The personnel decision is what I that's want to what say. I, that's, Common that's, I gotta sense see that. personnel decisions. Yeah. Um, like call them. All right, guys. <laughs> let's, Matt, what is the line on this Tulsa game? Uh, it's now? opened at 20 with a 61 over under or 60 over under. Now it's up to 22 and a half with about a 61 yeah, and a half over under. Oh, um, man. Oh, oh man. So we, well, we, we're favored by 22? Two. Yeah. Wow. Are, we, are we really sitting here like? Oh, I think Texas, Texas will cover. Gonna cover? Easy. I think they're going to cover. I think Tulsa is just terrible. Right. I think they're awful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we know they what they're going to do. Some. We know they're going to run a veer and shoot, but they were awful throwing the football last year. If you can't throw in a veer and shoot, you're pretty much screwed. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. I, right. I think this will be a lot like the San Jose State game last year. I think we'll see some things in theory get resolved, but we won't really know until the following week against USC. I'll take Texas to win. I'll take Texas to cover. I think it'll be a 42 to 10 kind of game. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was thinking along the bad. same lines. Yeah, I'd go with 42 to th- or 41 to 13. Uh, all right, I'll go 38 to um, 38 to 12. There you go. Again, I just think it's a lot like the San Jose State game last year, and then we'll have. Some good things, but really no major takeaways because well, we'll realize pretty quick the opponent is just not very good. Yeah, yeah. not up to par. Right. Yeah. Matt, thanks for everything, man. You're more than welcome. Rod, we appreciate the time and the knowledge. Anytime, brother. Anytime. For, for Matt, for Rod, for Travis, the best damn video, videographer in the podcast game, for everybody at the Austin Radio Network and the Horn, 1049 1019 AM 1260, worldwide on the Horn app and at hornfm.com, where you can get Rod B on the Rodcast each and every weekday from 1 to 3. Shameless plug. And thanks to Matt, you get us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, anywhere you get your podcast, and get all of our archives on the Longhorn Blitz SoundCloud page. Yep, just type in Longhorn Blitz. For the Horn family, for the Horns 24-7 family, I'm Jeff Howe. Thank you so much for downloading and listening, and we will catch you again on the next episode. You've been listening to Longhorn Blitz with Horns247.com. Remember, for the latest Longhorn news 24-7, visit Horns247.com.